88% on Rotten Tomatoes. 83% for audience score. If anybody is a fan of this film, do not watch this review. <laughs> if you love this film, don't watch this review. Because I'm a crap all over this film. Because it was a waste of money, a waste of time, a waste of an hour of my time. I decided to sit down, or lay down, and watch it. Because it was getting all this praise and raving reviews. And for what? You know, and I, I saw X. I did see that when I reviewed it on the channel. I'll link that either in, the, in this video somewhere or, at the, or you can search it up. Um, I reviewed it. And I ranted on it a bit. But at least that had kills that I can say were decent where it's here and I get it's trying to be a character driven story because the origin story and it was shot back to back with X even the trailer did nothing for me really I don't get why the first film got praise I really don't uh, I think Jenna Ortega was a decent actress in that Except her character was kind of stupid at the end. Well, not even kind of, she was stupid at the end. Um, I like how, at least, spoilers, at least the ending to the first film, you don't get a sequel. Well, if they, I guess you could make a sequel, but it would be with the chick that survived at the end, which I don't remember her name. <laughs> Shows how how memorable that movie is. Because this film, this is an A24 film, and I ranted on, I don't even think I reviewed Hereditary. I know I did Midsommar, Midsummer, whatever. I believe it's, I, I know I reviewed that on the channel, if I didn't delete it. Um, but I reviewed The Lodge, which, that's an A24 film. I think that's a way better film than this. That's a slow burn. Granted, this is a slow burn, but it was boring and not much really to, you know, um, look forward to. Um, I mean, and granted, I didn't see this in the theater because I'm not giving them my money, and plus, I can't make it to the theater. But I was able to see it online, and it was lame. <laughs> it was lame. I mean,. Again, the movie is... Started, okay, so Ty West decided to do a prequel to X, pretty much the character of Pearl in X, the old lady killer. You find out it was a, a killer. Um, the, the chick that played in that movie, the lead main chick, also played Pearl in that film. So she's playing Pearl in this film. Which I will say that was pretty cool how she was able to do both uh, characters. I like that. That was decent. I'll give I'll give the lead actress Mia Goth some credit on acting because at least the monologue, which really I uh, that's the only thing really to talk about for me. The only thing to highlight because I mean. I like the mono the mon monologue where uh, she was really good in that scene where she just like breaks down and just speaks her mind about what how she feels and so you sort of feel for her in that moment but everywhere else no because she kills her she kills her dad which I'm like why because the guy is paralyzed and helpless and frightened. <laughs> I felt more for him than I did her, and she's the main, you know, but he dies off screen, which you don't, I guess she suffocated him, we don't see it, we just hear it, because it cuts away to a bird, 
Tweety Bird in the cage. Um, it does have callbacks to the first film where it has an alligator. I guess she was friends with the alligator, so that proves. Oh, we also get why she hates blondes, I guess, because of her friend who seemed like a nice girl, but she... Because pretty much the movie, um, pretty much Pearl, I guess, I don't know how she's supposed to be in this, I guess, possibly 18, 19, maybe early, to, I don't know, because the way she acts, and then the way she's, like, treated, and, but then we find out she's married to, like, the Howard fella from the first film, older, her husband, who we meet, you know, and... He's not even a character in it. Like, he's mentioned, but he's not... We don't see him to the very, very end. Which is, like... Okay. Because pretty much he's off, you know, serving in the war, and she's stuck with her parents, her mom, who's overbearing and bitter, because she has to care for her father, who's... We know, I guess he's just paralyzed. Wait, we, like, I don't think we ever get a, uh, story of why, how that happened, but, and then the mom, like, is unlikable, uh, Pearl is just nuts, <laughs> oh, like, she seems decent, but then you can tell there's something off about her in certain situations. Um, I mean, being cooped up on a farm, at least Luke Skywalker, he was able to, you know, <laughs> um, but it gave me Luke Skywalker vibes with her stuck on the farm, I gotta go get some power converters, <laughs> or she goes, like, she goes into town and meets this film, um, projector guy, or something, and you think he's, you think she's gonna possibly fall for him but not really but of course that goes south um spoilers for this film by the way spoilers um yeah the film is just boring it i can't really compliment the, the scene photography because it was shot because the way i saw it was online and it was in the theater so it's theater quality so i'll have to just take word that, you know, what the trailers show is, is shot well, <laughs> but, but yeah, like, there's really no, again, I know it's a character-driven film, but, again, there's other character-driven films that still have depth to them where it's not boring, and at least, like Leatherface, for example, um, the, the prequel to TCM, the 2018 one, I believe, or 2017, whichever one, um, that is a prequel, that is a origin story, that, grant, they kind of copied off of Devil's Re Rejects for a bit, but still, like, I was able to still like somewhat the nurse character, I did like the sheriff, who dies, which sucks, um, not really, but good. But I liked his character. I liked somewhat Leatherface, but then, of course, because the end, you so say you can't really care for him for that much. Um, that's a way better film than this. Has better kills as well, because the kills the, the, that we get in here are lame. Like there's, she kills the the film projector guy who shows her ex, uh, black and white, you know, porno flick. Who I guess she, because he's alluding to she can be also a star in those films but then that never comes to be and she is paranoid and because we get the gist that she's paranoid a lot as well and she's uh whatever and so she kills him because she was paranoid oh what'd you see and like she doesn't get the idea she doesn't understand that she's freaking out which is freaking him out which is making him nervous and making him want to just not be around her anymore. So he drives off, but then she stabs him. And literally, when she stabs him, she fall, she pulls the the pitch pitchfork out and literally falls over as she takes it. I'm like, 
really? And then he just drives off still bleeding out. And then he stops the car because he's dying. You know. And, he, and then she stabs him in the mouth which with, with it and it's lame. And then she kills her friend at the end. Which was lame with an axe. We don't see her actually. We don't even get to see the aftermath. It's just. Well I, I guess we sort of see. I guess you can say we sort of see the aftermath. Where she does throw her body parts in the river with for the alligator crocodile whatever it is again she kills her mom sorta well burns her um because they have an argument where she wants to go to this audition this dance audition at a church because she thinks if she wins she'll get to go off to be with troops or something on the road and be a star somehow and then they argue a bit, and then her mom catches fire, and they struggle, and then she puts her out, but then she still dies, I guess. Um, which seemed like she wasn't on fire for that long, but I guess, you know, whatever. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm not the target audience for... I don't know. I don't want to say I'm not the target audience, because this is supposed to be a horror film, and I review horror flicks mostly on my channel. I do review other flicks to Disney, other animated films as well, but even reaction. But this, again, I, and it's co-written by Mia Goth with Ty West, so I don't know if, who's to blame in terms of the writing, because it was a boring origin story. Why do we even need an origin story for the character of Pearl? Who was asking for that? I mean, I get the first film, I guess, had a, such a big, you know, it creamed a lot of people's pants. Cause, or no, people creamed themselves because, oh, it's so scary. And then I'm seeing on uh, Rotten Tomatoes how this is a scary film as well. And, um... And it's not really, there's nothing really scary about it. I mean, Goth makes the most of a croaking, lengthy one-take monologue during which a new horror monster is born. <laughs> yeah, born and, and killed in the next film forever. Um, Pearl gets a little too close. There's like one negative review and the rest of them are all just oh yeah uh, uh, this uh, masterpiece it's a certain worthy worthy prequel no it's not it need to be made but whatever pearl is ra is a rather unusual companion piece to ty west's ex that you can't ever look away from yes you can it's called turn it off um or put it on mute and do something else Again, like, you know, Pearl is too, Pearl is too twisted and weird for all viewers, but it's more accomplished than X, and it allows Goth to smear the screen with blood. No, it doesn't. With blood unleashed rage and a killer smile, or, yeah, she's trying to win, uh, she's trying to beat the Joker out of his sm iconic smell. I'm sorry, Joker wins. Or maybe I should st say a killer smile. And that was from Robert... Whatever. West and Goth have expanded on the first installment. Tale. Of sexual repression. As violence in this deranged feature. That's elevated even farther by Goth. Sparkling and wise full performance as a ruthless killer. Okay, this one guy, I don't know what move, I don't know what cut he saw because there's barely blood smear, or, uh, there's bl barely any blood smeared on this screen. What are you talking about? And what rage? Very lame, if you ask me. It's incredibly effective, 
flawlessly acted and works as both a standalone piece as part of a whole tense, gripping, and sometimes shocking. The movie comes in as one of the better horror film experiences. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Please, anybody down in the, aud in the comments, if you enjoy this film, that's fine. But what, what is so scary about this film? Because it seems like the first film, people were raving about it. And now they want to say this is also a best of, in, of the decade or of the year. I mean, the first film had potential, and then the, it was lame. I can't really sympathize with her as much because, again, she she killed her dad who was paralyzed and was frightened most of the movie. I felt, again, I felt more for him than I did her, and she's supposed to be the main, you know, I just don't get it. I don't get it. It's edited fine, I guess, a little, a bit. Um... But yeah, anybody down in the comments, leave a comment if, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, if you like the film, that's cool. I have no problem with that. I, I would like to know why. Maybe you can explain something that I didn't see or un care to understand. Maybe I'll like the film if a certain, better if you explain to me what it was meant, what it was trying to do. Because, uh, again, like the Howard character, who's Pretty essential to, like, the, in the first film is not really, uh, a big part. I mean, he is somewhat, but not, like, he's not physically in the film, really. Like, he, like, very, again, at the end, at the very, very end, he is. And it even ends lame, where he comes home, and he sees the dead parents at the table, and, and she's like, Oh, Howard, I'm so happy you're home. And then she does her stupid Joker Harley Quinn cosplay smile. Um, I don't know. I, I just... Again, there's other movies, origin films, horror origin films. And you can't say I don't like... A24 films, because I liked The Lodge. Really, that's the only one I liked. Or really, I loved, because I, I liked how it... I even liked how it ended, and that's supposed to be kind of downbeat, but you know what? <laughs> I'll take that film over this and X. And for a film, it's supposed to be, you know, uh, you know, sexual or whatever. There's not really any nudity in this, and in case and it's supposed to be a slasher, and there's supposed to be nudity, and there's really not, except a old black and white film that's showing like a dude going to town on two chicks. Even, but like we don't see Mia Goth, you know, like that. We see her in makeup in the first film as Pearl, very old, naked, and crusty and actually getting it on with Howard, which is gro really was the grossest part of the first film. And I don't want to see that again. But, um, yeah. I don't know. You, again, this for me was a dud. So, thanks for watching. Take care. And like and subscribe, share, comment.